lot of objects on the streets of Hackney with skips, uh, dustbins, um, gutters. <laughs> I, I have no shame in looking in skips and dustbins. Um, there's amazing stuff on the streets that people throw out. There's one specific place which is sadly vanishing now. Um, it's the Kingla Kingsland Road Waste Market, which is just south of Dalston on a Saturday. And it's a bit of an antique market. Um, and then there's a lot of fly pitchers who come along as well and bring just, you know, broken light bulbs, <laughs> old biros, things like that, that are at the end of the day on a Saturday. A lot of this stuff will just be left behind. They can't be bothered to take it home. Old records, things like that. I, I found these. Um, I found the um, puppet men in an old box in a, in a warehouse in Shoreditch. They were quite all smashed up by then. I, I actually didn't know what it was. It was a box. So I could see the head sticking out and broken mechanical bits and things. And I just thought, oh, that looks exciting, and I'll take it home. And I didn't realise they had plugs on them, and I took them out and I got them home. They didn't have any clothes on or anything, um, and this, the heads were all smashed in, actually. I had to repair them. And then I saw the plugs, and I plugged them in, and they actually moved, you know. And I couldn't believe somebody just throwing that out, you know. <laughs> um, the feet. The feet are called the gleaners. I'm not sure why. I like the sound of the word. And I just saw it written down, and then I looked it up to find out what it meant. And it means to gather stuff, um, which is what I do. I gather lots of junk, and I um, put pieces of junk together. I, when I was looking, riding around the streets of Hackney, I always see lots of shoes abandoned on the street. And I bought a couple home and didn't know what to do with them, and then I kept finding more and more. And I just kept finding shoes everywhere and I just brought them home and I wasn't sure what to do with them. But then um, then I kept finding rusty bits of metal and they seemed to want to be put into the shoes so I filled the shoes with plaster and then I, and then I had this uh, bag of balloon whisks that you use to whip up eggs and I made the heads from plaster wrapped around the balloon whisks and their eyes are made of their eyes are old coins and I love these rusty bits of metal that come out of them come out of their heads it's as though these are this is what they're thinking these are their ideas or they're transmitting messages from from somewhere I'd written a song called The Whale which was about the whale that got stuck in the Thames in, I think it was 2005, um, and there was a huge media frenzy about it and everyone went down to the Thames to um, wave at the whale and um, there was a huge operation to try and freeze and send it back into the sea, but unfortunately it died, they couldn't, um, they couldn't move it back to the sea. But all the newspapers were full of this story. Um, and the banks of the Thames were crowded with people and wishing the whale well. Anyway, after, after it was all over, I wrote a song about it. And uh, imagine this guy was the captain of one of the boats that was trying to free the whale. And uh, the song, a couple of verses from the song were actually written inside the suitcase. And, um, as it's a song, I put some guitar strings inside and uh, it makes whale sounds. The kids lifted high for the memory as news crews chopped the sky. I went to school until I was 16. I hated school, left as soon as I could. <laughs> and I never remember any um, artistic um, training at school. I think the one time I had an art lesson, I was told I was rubbish. 
it was about 15 years ago, um, somebody gave me um, some paper and some pens and um, so it was sort of overnight that I just started using them. I had, didn't really know what to do with them, but I just started doodling, I suppose, in a way. And it was long rolls of very thin Chinese paper and some black ink pens. And because these rolls of paper are this long, I felt I had to fill up every space on the paper. And I still do that to this day. I get these long rolls of paper and still work on it. It can take months until the whole sheet of paper is filled up. Um, sometimes I'll rip the paper in half so I don't have to <laughs> spend so long doing a whole piece. This is a picture um, called Peter's Opera. Um, I had a good friend called Peter who was an archaeologist and anthropologist. He passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, when I was a child he used to take us on digs in caves and we used to find old bones and teeth and uh, he was a fantastic character himself and his other passion apart from archaeology was um, opera. He was also very encouraging about my work, he used to encourage me to do it and I normally draw in black and white but he was, he was always trying to get me to use more colour. Anyway I did this drawing after he died and um, it's called Peter's Opera and it has got some colour in it so I like to think he would like it or maybe he does like it looking down from heaven. Did you always want to be a good fairy when you grew up? I'm not sure I am a good fairy. People always assume that I'm the good fairy. And um, I always say, well, Adam is actually, actually the good fairy. Adam's the um, my brother who I play music with. The band's called Diego Brown and the Good Fairy. People assume that I'm the fairy, but I think actually he's the good fairy. <laughs> Concerning Adam's music, he's a lot more, I'd say, probably political. This is a song about the big society. Down to earth lyrics about the everyday life. Okay, so do, do your neighbours ever lend you their keys or ever give you their keys when they go on holiday? Not, not mysterious in any way, he likes to be upfront okay. about things. This is what happens when my neighbours give me the keys to go on holiday. I find it much more difficult and I think I tend to just write, round, write down things that come into my head that don't make any sense and try and make sense out of it later. At our gigs, we try and put on a show. I mean, we dress up for a gig and we try and involve the audience. We try not to be too serious. We try and um, create an atmosphere in the room. We have been to folk gigs where, or folk festivals where they've just hated us because we're not proper folk music um, and we don't sing, you know, we're not brilliant singers, we're not brilliant musicians. And yeah, some of these proper folk gigs with their fingers in their ears, they don't like us at all. <laughs> I, I, the, the truth of it is, I'm really bad at playing instruments. And I've actually quite started to quite like that, you know, now I've collected violins that only have two strings on them or something like this. And I just like the sound it makes. Adam always says, oh, we should be playing. Wembley Stadium or something like that. I've never played Wembley Stadium. Um, we just um, keep doing what we're doing, I think. I want to be that was a song I wrote a couple of years ago. 
could be, and um, it was just this, I thought it was just a very silly little throwaway rhyme. <laughs> As we were playing it together, as I was playing with, with Adam, it sort of grew into a bit some, something a bit more dramatic. I need to feel that Sad and bad and It's very easy to be dramatic with it, you know. It's one of those like old musical songs where you can just throw yourself around singing it. I think I'll probably imagine myself as one of those old, like Edith Piaf or someone being extra dramatic and um, I really let myself go on it. Thank you. 